We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump can be on the ballot in Colorado and other states. I'm not confident that that will produce a result that's good for American democracy. Welcome to this week's Wacky Moments of Leftist Extremism. Now, it was a week where the leftist tears flowed like a waterfall for much of the week. The first downpour came Monday following the unanimous 9-0 U.S. Supreme Court decision that struck down leftist efforts to remove former President Trump from 2024 ballots. We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump can be on the ballot in Colorado and other states. I'm not confident that that will produce a result that's good for American democracy. This is actually what I had been concerned about. The court itself may have overstepped. The court went way further than it needed to go. Oh, those bitter tears, they were so tough to swallow for the leftist media, who quickly came to the conclusion that a unanimous 9-0 decision isn't really a unanimous 9-0 decision. If you scratch the surface just a little. This is a 5-4 to four ruling on part of it. This is actually a 5-4 to four decision. It's 5-4. to four. Actually, it's not, and Trump was put on the ballot. You, you can cry now, media, it's okay. He, he's on the ballot and voters will vote and he, and he looks like he's headed to become the Republican nominee for president. Suddenly a democracy voting doesn't sound as good to them. And, and you know what else they would like to get rid of now? Appeals. You shouldn't be able to appeal any court ruling that CNN really likes. What do you say to all those Americans out there who are watching this, who are frustrated and say, you know, Trump is getting away with uh, breaking the law, that he uh, files appeal after appeal, he tries to delay every proceeding that's brought against him in a way that is just, it, it just goes against what our judicial system should be about. Appealing a court ruling that you think is a mistake, that's against justice. The logic is so insane that not even CNN's guest can join Acosta as he rolls in his muck of Trump hatred. Well, actually, they do have the ability to do that. That's part of our justice system. Well, but, but for but all I practical do purposes, that, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. Appeals just never happen. The, the left just melted down on this. Logic and reason thrown to the wind. MSNBC is concerned that because Trump is allowed on the ballot, logically, now 12-year-olds will run for president. In section, in Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution, now I'm playing play lawyer on TV, it says no person shall, except for a natural born citizen or citizens of the United States at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, shall be eligible to the office of president, nor shall any person be eligible who shall not have attained the age of 35 years and been 14 years a resident within the United States. So if states can't enforce Section 3 of Article 14, can they enforce that? Couldn't a 12-year-old say, I'm running for president, or Arnold Schwarzenegger? Could a state knock them off the ballot? Because that's a federal office, they'd be running for president. If the states can't enforce it, can they enforce this? Yes, because 35 is 35, and it's greater than 12, and Austria is still Austria. But in a free country, whether someone is guilty of a crime that they've never actually been charged with, that's really not an indisputable fact. You know, if I want Taylor Swift or Prince Harry to be president, if they're two uh, figures that I know are near and dear to my colleague, Professor Murray's heart, uh, then, you know, I, why shouldn't I be able to uh, vote for them as well? Oh, the leftist media do hate facts, don't they? Like watching Joe Biden this week. Uh, thanks. I have a lot of questions. I better not start the questions, I'll get in trouble. What's your message for Super Tuesday voters? Let's get Joe Scarborough's take. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. So let's just put those two moments together, shall we? I have a lot of questions. I better not start the questions, I'll get in trouble. Start your tape right now, because I'm about to tell you the truth. And F you if you can't handle the truth. This version of Biden, intellectually, analytically, is the best Biden ever. And since this Biden is the best Biden, there'd be no need for the media to make crap up about his opponent in a future election, right? Hi everyone, it's Pro Clark in New York as we begin MSNBC's special coverage of Super Tuesday. Millions are headed to the polls in 16 states for what is the biggest day of voting, other than Election Day, of course, a moment after which Americans will have to face the fact that this is 
in the words of a dear friend of this show, the do you want to have any more elections election. <laughs> or not. It seems elections will just end if the leftist media doesn't get the guy that they want in office. Well, this is a real historical moment. We could be a dictatorship next year if Donald Trump is elected. So Super Tuesday comes and it goes as expected, except maybe in Vermont where Haley won and American Samoa where Biden lost, but really no big surprises. Unless you work at MSNBC where of course everything is racist. I mean, people don't really care about things like the economy. They're voting on race. They're voting on this idea of an invasion of brown people over the border. The idea that they can't get whatever job they want. A black person got it, therefore drive all the blacks out of the colleges, get rid of DEI. That is what they're voting on. They're yeah. just voting specifically on racial animus. Which at this stage, it isn't about economics. No. What? I mean, if you look at some of these exit polls, I mean, I live in Virginia. Immigration was the number one issue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, these could change in, in Virginia. Well, Virginia does have a border with West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> the border is not a real issue either, apparently. Uh, people concerned about it, they're to be mocked by MSNBC. Uh, when they're not mocking the concerns of America, the leftist media is giving Biden advice and pre-writing speeches for him. It, it's so nice of the New Yorker to help out. I wonder if that counts as a campaign donation. And Biden delivered a divisive speech. And of course, the leftist media has always hated it when our democratic institutions are attacked. And the way in which the former president and too many Republicans have attacked uh, those institutions has had a negative impact. But of course, you know, when Biden attacks at one of our institutions. On every single subject, it was extraordinary. And, and there was at that moment that I think we all remember of the way he attacked, I guess is the word for it, the Supreme Court to their faces, uh, where the camera then goes to this shot of the six Supreme Court justices, three of whom he was very specifically attacking. Uh, that's never been done before. The, to, the, to the extent that a president has a disagreement with the Supreme Court expressed in a State of the Union address, they always try to find the most polite possible language for doing that. This was not the night for that. Uh, so that that was just astonishing. Uh, yeah, Trump attacks are aggressive, but Biden, you know, he's a... Uh a feisty speech that at times felt more like a rowdy campaign event than a traditional State of the Union address. Because it was a campaign event, a speech for one audience, the leftist news media, his biggest supporters. I, this was his, how about them apple speech for me. I mean, this, we've said this is what the fourth or the, I mean, you know, we, we've watched this before. I think that grabbing the room by, you know, he started with World War II mm -hmm. and the Civil War. I'm Eric Shiner from MRC TV, asking you to become one of our supporters. Head over to the MRC homepage, click on that donate button, visit MRC TV for the latest in videos, information, and entertainment, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe on the social media platforms that actually let you see us. And we'll be back again next week with another look at Leftist Media Madness. I want to invite you as my guest on a very special once-in-a-lifetime, seven-day post-election cruise in the Caribbean. Caribbean. It's going to be a blast.